Hey everyone, welcome back to Bear It In Mind. This video is part two, exploring the multi-store model of memory. In the previous video, we explored the structure and processes of memory according to the model and considered the first store, the sensory register, in terms of its coding capacity and duration. This video is now going to explore the short-term and long-term stores, including the research evidence for both. Joseph Jacobs in 1887 conducted an experiment into short-term memory. Participants were presented with a digit span task which required them to repeat back a series of numbers or letters with the length of the numbers or letters increasing by one each time. For example, participants will be presented with this four-digit number and then asked to recall it then this five digit number and recall that and keep going until they made an error. Jacobs found that on average the capacity of short term memory in his participants for letters was 7.3 and for numbers 9.3. If you wanted to see the capacity of your memory check out the video we did on the cognitive approach where you can see if you can score higher than 7. Then, George Miller in 1956, in summarising the research into the capacity of memory, proposed the magic number 7, suggesting that the capacity of short-term memory is 7 plus or minus 2 items. Importantly, Miller also noted that it is possible for us to remember more than 7 individual letters or numbers through a process he called chunking. This is when you group together items so that they can be stored as a single concept. For example, we can remember seven words as well as we can remember seven letters. If we group together numbers or letters into meaningful chunks, we can remember that information just as well. For example, how would you memorize this random list of letters? Well, if we broke them up into meaningful chunks, it becomes easier to remember. Notice how we have the names of three companies and two animals. You may not have realised, but you probably chunk your mobile phone number. Say it out loud now and have a listen for the little pauses where you break it up into manageable chunks. Researchers Peterson and Peterson in 1959, husband and wife no less, conducted research into the duration of short-term memory. How about we have a go at this one together? We can do it! This'll be easy! You're going to be presented with a trigram. This is simply three random letters, all consonants, such as Z, K, H. You won't see these letters, they'll be spelt to you. Your task is to remember it. However, you are then going to be presented with a three-digit number, like 297. This will be spoken to you. You must count backwards from that number, taking three off each time until you're told to stop. So just to be clear, you will hear me say a trigram like this, Z, K, H, and then you'll hear me say a number, 297. You then need to count backwards from that number, taking three off each time. So 297, 294, 291, etc. You can then write down the trigram that I presented to you at the beginning when this appears on the screen. We're going to do this four times. Trigram first, then a number. Make sure to count backwards out loud. Here we go. T W P six four three. D B Q five three zero P S C one nine six H G T four seven nine. 
Here are the answers. How did you do? In Peterson and Peterson's study, participants did the same task that you did, but they did it eight times. And what they did was vary the length of time before participants were told to stop counting backwards and recall the trigram. Why do you think they added the task of counting backwards in threes? Well, you may remember from the last video where we looked at how the multi-star model stated that you can maintain information in your short-term memory by continuing to rehearse it in your head by saying it over and over again. Blue flower, red thorns, blue flower, red thorns, blue flower, red thorns. This would be so much easier if I wasn't colorblind. This counting backwards task was designed to prevent participants rehearsing the letters. They found that the longer the interval, the amount of time that passed, between hearing the trigram and recalling it, the less accurate the recall. At three seconds, the number of trigrams correctly recalled was around 80% compared to only 10% after 18 seconds, with it continuing to decline after that, leading to the suggestion that the duration of short to memory is around 18 to 30 seconds. Now we come to coding. Just as a reminder, the word acoustic refers to sound-based information, or what you might hear referred to as auditory or phonological. And the word semantic refers to the meaning of words. One of the most famous memory researchers is Alan Badley, whose name will appear a lot throughout this memory topic. In Badley's 1966 studies, he investigated how short-term and long-term memory are encoded. In this experiment, participants were presented with a list of words that were spoken to them and then asked to recall them. There were four groups. Group one, acoustically similar. The words had a similar sound. For example, man, cab, can, and cat. Group two, acoustically dissimilar. The words had a different sound. For example, pit, few, cow, pen. Group three, semantically similar. The words had a similar meaning, e.g. great, large, big, huge. And group four, semantically dissimilar. The words had a different meaning, e.g. good, huge, hot, safe. The list of words was read out to them, and then they were asked to immediately recall the words in the same order as they heard them. They found that group one, the acoustically similar list, performed the worst. This led Badly to conclude that short-term memory is predominantly encoded acoustically. We can conclude that short-term memory is being encoded acoustically because when the sounds presented overlap, i.e. they are similar, it causes acoustic confusion. You would only experience confusion with the sounds if that is what your mind is focusing on and using to encode the information. We have no problem recalling semantically similar words because short to memory pays no attention to the meaning of the words, it just pays attention to the sounds. And because semantically similar words do not sound the same, then it's no problem. Now, very simply, for the encoding of long-term memory, Badley's 1966 study that we just explored had the same participants try to recall the same lists, but 20 minutes later, thus testing recall from long-term memory. This time they found that group 3, the semantically similar list, performed the worst. This led Badley to conclude that long-term memory is predominantly encoded semantically. The meaning-based encoding of material in long-term memory is seen by how it causes confusion when materials mean the same thing. We have no problem recalling acoustically similar words because long-term memory pays no attention to how the words sound, it just pays attention to the meaning. And because acoustically similar words do not have the same meaning, then it's no problem. Now I know this study can be rather confusing, but let me show you two past exam questions where your understanding of this research has been needed to successfully answer it. Firstly, in a study of coding in short-term memory, participants were given lists of words to learn. There were two conditions. Condition A, the list contained words that sounded similar to each other. Condition B, the list contained words that sounded different from each other. After 20 seconds, the participants were required to recall the words in the same order as on the list. Use your knowledge of short-term memory to explain the likely outcome of this study. 
Many students who were not familiar with badly studies thought that participants would recall more words from condition A. They thought that words with a similar sound were easier to remember. However, you will now know that participants make more errors with similar sounds and therefore recall more from condition B. Now take a look at the mark scheme for this question. It stated, in short term tasks there is confusion with sound based material and this suggests that short to memory involves acoustic coding. Let's consider a second exam question that develops this further. In an investigation into memory, participants were presented with two different lists of words. After seeing the lists, participants were tested on their ability to recall the words. When tested immediately, participants found it more difficult to recall the words from list A in the correct order. When tested after 30 minutes, participants found it more difficult to recall the words from list B in the correct order. Using your knowledge of coding in memory, explain these findings. So first things first, what's the difference between the two lists? List A contains words that are acoustically similar. List B contains words that are semantically similar. You also needed to have noticed that when it says tested immediately, that was a reference to short term memory. Whereas when it says 30 minutes later, that's a reference to long term memory. So putting those two things together, along with our knowledge of badly, we can now explain the findings. List A is made up of words that are acoustically similar, that sound the same. This will cause confusion and difficulty when tested immediately as short term memory uses acoustic sound based coding. List B is made up of words that are semantically similar, that have a similar meaning. This will cause confusion and difficulty when tested after 30 minutes as long term memory uses semantic meaning based coding. And that's it. If you understand those exam questions, you've understood coding. Now let's complete our understanding of the features of long-term memory, this time with duration. I wonder if you could remember all the people you went to school with. Well, Barry Cattell in 1975 studied 392 high school graduates from the state of Ohio in America. These participants were aged from 17 to 74 years old. Their long-term memory was tested in the form of the names and pictures of their classmates taken from their high school yearbooks. A variety of memory tasks were performed and they found that for photo recognition, those who had graduated high school within the last 15 years were about 90% accurate when asked to recognize someone from a photo and this declined to about 70% after 48 years. And this study demonstrated how memories can last for a very long time, a person's lifetime. Simply put, long-term memory is assumed to have a capacity that can hold an unlimited amount of information because no research to date has been able to find a limit to its capacity. Now that we've explored each store of the multi-star model in terms of its capacity, duration and coding, this table summarizes each of the stores. A common question in the exam has been to present you with a table like this, but with a few pieces of information missing for you to fill in. So practicing recalling the information from this table will be very useful. Now it's not enough for you to simply know about the multi-star model and its features. You must know how to evaluate the model. So if you want to master that content, check out that video now. I hope you found this video helpful and we'll see you in the next one.